much. <laughs> All right. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting of uh, September 19th at uh, 7 p.m. I declare this meeting in order, uh, and I would uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty, justice, justice for all. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the announcements. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to ask uh, Mrs. Uh, Dean Wing to uh, talk a little bit about the Centennial Banquet of October 2nd. Yep. So um, last week wrapped up the Community Day, which was a great success. So the Centennial Banquet, Banquet will be taking place on Sunday, October 2nd at 1 o'clock at the Grand View, which is the former uh, married ballroom in our mother town of Menden. Uh, cocktails are at 1 o'clock, followed by dinner and dancing and a small program. Um, the price is $40 per ticket, and they are on sale now only up until this Friday. There will be no exception for any late sales because we have to pay. So that's it. <laughs> so you have till this Friday to make that purchase, and it's at the senior center in the police station during their normal business hours, or they could reach out to uh, Lois Salome and um, get their ticket with her. Um, but it looks to be a great time, and uh, we have been blessed by the weather gods. All of our events have gone on without a hitch, and we're hoping to take advantage of not just the ballroom, but the grounds there also. So. Um, get your tickets and we'll see you there. The candles still available. For oh, the cake. that was on my notes too, and I oh. skipped over it. The <laughs> birthday cake, uh, the cake that was made and donated by Mr. Height and Mr. Donnelly, um, constructed, made, donated for the parade will be at the event on uh, October second, and there will be candles for sale. For there are still some available for a hundred dollars, and you can make it out to memory of, or in honor of, or even just your family's name, and you get the candle at the conclusion of it. Um, but it is part of one of the fundraising efforts, so those are available um, as long as um, Ms. Slomi has time, I'm sure, <laughs> to get the cards made up. I don't have a deadline on those, but definitely for the tickets. So thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Uh, Tuesday, September 6th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve minutes of Tuesday, September 6th, 2016 at 7 p.m. So moved. Roll. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Monday, August 29th. 2016 at uh, 7 p.m. I move to accept the minutes of August 29th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Second. Roll. Aye. 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 Department, uh, departments and boards. Uh, library trustee appointment, uh, Carlene Anderson, uh, library director. Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, we were going to be accompanied by uh, one of the trustees, and um, she notified me late this afternoon that uh, Colleen could not be here, um, not Colleen, the appointee. Uh, but uh, I do want to let you know that the process uh, that I had reported on the last time in uh, late August, the position was posted. Uh, it's sometimes very difficult to find somebody who wants to be a part-time librarian, uh, but the public uh, library trustees uh, had uh, forwarded me both the resume and the um, in letter of interest, and the, lo and behold, we have someone who's a, a, a repeat uh, person back to Millville, kind of reminds me of myself, uh, but somebody who's worked uh, for the town uh, in a similar capacity uh, that went on uh, to work for Bryant University and now is looking in her um, semi-retired uh, phase uh, to be a part-time librarian. Uh, Colleen Anderson is somebody who 
has not only an MBA from Bryant University, but also has a master's of uh, library information um, uh, systems from the University of Rhode Island. Uh, very well published and uh, has been somebody who uh, the public library um, trustees have said that they were really excited to have her come on board. So um, they've given me um, the opportunity to speak uh, about her and I would highly recommend her as well, but um, they wanted to make sure that you knew that we're having a new one come aboard. And there will be a transition of um, a couple weeks uh, with the existing uh, librarian and uh, so hopefully that transition will go well and um, mm -hmm. and that's about it. And they have all their math certifications. Yes, yes, and that was one of the reasons. Yeah. Um, I think I'd like to um, make sure that the community knows that our current librarian has done an awful um, great amount of work in um, maintaining our library through the years and really I think this was a difficult decision for the library trustees because it really came down to losing funding by not having um, the person with the appropriate certifications and, and educational background and I know that our current library director understands that um, even though it might be uh, something that's difficult um, at this point in time but uh, rest assured I, I know that the library trustees are trying to work on um, figuring out ways to to continue having a, you know a good solid uh, relationship and maybe even reconfiguring the way that they do the work at the library but the head librarian had to be of this kind of caliber or they would have lost funding from the state which is their most crucial thing I'll hear a motion to appoint Colleen Anderson as so library moved. director so moved second Roll. Aye. 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 Public forum. No one. No one. The hand on. Correspondence, uh, Mrs. Callahan. Yes, I've put several things in your packet because I know that the board uh, oftentimes is eager to try to send out a representative. Uh, the first one has to do with the Mass Association of um, uh, Planning um, okay. Councils, and uh, there is an upcoming um, IT modernizing uh, local government and using information technology, and that is uh, due to be held on October 18th, uh, and it's not too far away in Framingham, and it is something that uh, is both um, consistently being uh, put together with Mass IT and the Department of uh, Revenue and the Division of Local Services, which we know we're big advocates for in this community, and uh, so I would implore that if you would like to see um, more of the information technology that we're trying to advance here in town, there are all Always new things that come about so I'd encourage it is close you. by it is close by it is it is very close by the next uh, thing in your packet I wanted to put before you um, we know how successful our uh, green communities um, committee has been and uh, not only with grant obtainment in the past but with continuing to execute um, those funds and um, they were a big uh, component of the um, Community Day that we just had, and I know that uh, Trish uh, in our uh, police department has been an integral player, and I wanted to put together just so that you see, it's not in color uh, in here, but I think in your packets I put a color. Uh, they did have these uh, handouts that uh, were made and designed uh, by Trish, and uh, they were handed out during that uh, very successful day, so it's... Um, the Millville Green Community Committee it was called the Quiet Revolution, and in it, of course, it gives you all kinds of good information uh, about everything from uh, recycling to uh, energy efficiency. So our Thank chairman you. is also a very, very uh, strong and um, uh, participative member of that committee. So I want to say thank you for doing such good work, and I think this uh, speaks to those kinds of things. The other thing in the uh, packet, uh, because it's fall, so you were going to see a lot of different opportunities to go to things. Um, there is a immune, uh, immune energy breakfast seminar that's being hosted by the Mass Municipal Association. Again, there are several, but there's one right in Grafton on the 27th, um, and I would say that this um, has to do with the actual immune energy program, and um, they're looking at uh, looking at everything from solar installation to um, actual energy strategies for communities. So this is. Uh similar to a trade show as well? I think they also have that component of it. Uh, yes, I would say it does, so that you can actually not only attend a seminar pieces of it, but actually meet with vendors, and that would be probably very helpful for our community going forward. 
And, um, and then the last piece of it I um, put in your packets uh, were a correspondence that came through my office with regards to net metering uh, credit agreements and a company called Soltage uh, that has been interested in um, reaching out to us. Uh, they have a number of municipalities that they work with um, in the Commonwealth and I would be more than happy to try to uh, work with the Green Communities um, Division and or the uh, Chairman to uh, set up a time in which we could meet with them. So I wanted to put that in your packet. Thank you. You're welcome. And that's all for correspondence. Uh, new business, uh, Chestnut Hill uh, Community uh, Association. Uh, did I miss the piece in there? Uh, it's just a little uh, flip here, there. Uh, I put in your packet just a brief uh, message that came, and I did want to update the community. One of the things um, in my regular update that I will talk about is where we're at with the whole notion of our um, municipal town building. We've had an ongoing series of communications uh, through this board. We have uh, several uh, different boards that are meeting and uh, meeting concurrently with the Board of Selectmen to try to address this issue. But uh, the chairman of the board and I both had, um, had an opportunity to reach out to the Chestnut Hill Community Association Association, and they just um, were so welcoming and uh, wanted to really help the town and they convened uh, pretty quickly on a time schedule um, understanding that we might be looking at a need for um, having space and we did not know whether they would be amenable to that and they convened after meeting with the executive board within a week they had their um, actual board meet with all of their members and they sent this um, email to say that um, they are definitely um, interested in helping the town in any way that we feel is uh, prudent and um, and they are waiting um, not only to hear from us but I did speak with Kathy Anderson the president she um, is going to try to make it here but obviously she's not here right now and I just want to say thank you to all of the community members uh, for at least uh, considering this and allowing us to maybe potentially develop an agreement we're not quite there because we we have a committee that is getting close to making that decision, and I'll save that for the update, but I did want to extend that, um, and if she had been here, for the opportunity to, to speak to that. The uh, town hall donation gift account? Yes, I wanted the, um, the selectmen to, to, I think, make a decision tonight because um, this has to do with the notion that I've had people approach me saying that they would like to help us with um, perhaps making donations, um, financial or gift otherwise, um, to help us as a community deal with the notion of what's happened to us with our town hall. And currently we don't have anything um, that is set up for that particular need. And we know that was going forward when we, um, we've had this temporary emergency type of location, uh, which we've worked on, uh, but we know that we're gonna be needing to move. So <coughs> I would ask the board for some direction um, tonight uh, to be able to work with our accountant and um, also your board to come up with an appropriate designation that will allow us to um, not only take in funds that can be used for that, but to also expend funds that would be exclusively used um, for the improvement um, or repairs of the town hall. I would uh, support considering uh, a gift account. And I think we need to do a little work and speak with the accounting people. And um, if there's a vendor or citizen or resident that's interested in making a donation to the town uh, by all means okay yeah I think we just need to know just so it's there mm -hmm. I mean I'm gonna wait for my tax bill <laughs> 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 but uh, but I can understand the need for it um, especially you know if someone's out there in their business or sometimes they use matching funds and they have to it's yeah. part of their so I don't have a problem with that. I think it just needs to be very clear cut. Are we talking um, ta you know, new, transition? Mm -hmm. I think there's some great areas there that we want to make sure that it's accepted under the right premise and it's dispersed in that same manner. So I think that's, I know they've done it in the past. We've gotten stuff from National Grid and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I just want to make sure that it's proper. I think by the next um, meeting that we have, uh, special or regular, I think we can have that language to you, and um, in that way, you can uh, make sure that uh, you know it's been vetted by your financial team as well mm -hmm. as you, and then perhaps that will be more amenable to you. All but right. I just wanted to get that direction from you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. thank you. All right. Old 
business. We don't have anyone here representing the playground. Uh, no, but we um, unfortunately our, our police chief is um, heading out to um, uh, pick up a piece of equipment that I'll update you on. Uh, and I do want to um, bring up a piece of old business, uh, which is the MES uh, playground uh, committee, and in particular. Uh, where this board had uh, previously uh, left that issue. Uh, there's been some renewed interest, not only from citizens, but also from our department heads, including our police chief and also um, our playgrounds and recreation department um, uh, chairman, uh, that there is uh, not only renewed interest, but the big piece to this is perhaps reconfiguring uh, where they may want to locate this. I think it's a prime time to bring it up because we're coming on with a new town planner uh, who's going to be here in October. Um, it's a perfect uh, project for a town planner to work on in concert with those people who are in parks and recreation and also um, the police chief to consider the safety issues and and uh, what we're I think starting to lean towards is that there's been discrepancy of where to put this um, playground and also to come up with the agreement. The Board of Selectmen has to deal with the agreement and understand really where the placement would be. So I think by having the town planner and other people really define this so that it gets defined uh, of, of where the best place is and to review the agreement, um, I think we can then you know be able to move forward. But that has to be defined first and, um, and I know that in talking with the uh, chief and also um, members of the parks and recreation that I think it's a really good time with the new planner coming on and um, and that way everyone can feel comfortable of where this would be and what the agreement may be uh, and I think then it's doable so I just wanted to put it on your radar and uh, you know uh, hopefully authorize that you want to go forward with the least um, having those people come before us mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps at a later date where they have defined the parameters better mm -hmm. I believe we we've walked. Yeah. We've walked this property. Yep. I believe we gave them the go ahead yep. to start the process. Where it got stopped was maybe about two years ago, mm -hmm. I wanna say. Mm -hmm. It's a town meeting. It was at um, a special town meeting, yeah. so it was a fall meeting and I don't think it was last year. It could have been last year, it could have been the year before, I can't remember. Um, and we were presented with the agreement. The problem I had with the agreement is there's certain things in here in regards to $20,000 that is kept for um, maintenance and repair. There was also um, liability insurance and, and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. At that meeting, the school committee, su the superintendent and two committee members were sitting in the back and I, I asked when, I said just comparing, when Blackstone put in their playground at JFK, what type of agreement, you know, what are we yeah. what are we working with? Is this similar? Or is it and it was we sent a letter and said we were putting a playground. Black that's what Blackstone did. And then at that point we realized that our playground committee had been talking and constructing this agreement with our town council. And I think that was a surprise to all of us sitting at yep. that table that evening. Uh -huh. I I'm I will not sign this. No, if no. All we need to do, I'm just saying, yeah. I'm going on the record. If all we need to do is say we're putting a playground on the property we own at the school for our children, then that's what I will sign. But all of this, and I don't know how much money was spent out of our lawyer account to do this, mm -hmm. if it was not needed and it's just a simple letter. That's what we do. Yeah. Well, I, so I, I, I'm all for the playground. Sure. <laughs> I looked through the records, and um, that's what I came up with. And, and just also so that I can impart to you all that uh, the, the chief has indicated to me also that there, even though this uh, map that you know showed the location, that there's a, a definite a rethinking of, of where they can locate that, and that from a public safety standpoint, um, near the water tower behind the school is not something that. Uh, like you have strong feelings about um, that aspect, that that might not be where it would most appropriately be placed. And I think that the Parks and Recreation are in a good position to help determine that with the town plan, with the police chief, put them all together so that you'll feel comfortable with whatever they propose. And then in the end, also take a look more closely at what's really needed uh, and how simple can it be in, in allowing them to go forward. Mm -hmm. um, I would be more than happy to work with that committee and come back to you, um, you know, at a later date. But I'd like to put it back on the radar uh, 
one of the things that I expressed is that there are wonderful grants for um, uh, parks and recreation, and um, sometimes you need to actually have certain things in place to, to bring in other things uh, and monetary uh, funding for things like that. So yeah, I think it's a good thing if we can get it all together and yeah. this time do it the right way. I, I think the reason it was there is because they exhausted all the other possibilities on that site. So I welcome if there's another location, but I know the, the larger field had issues in regards to the septic and, and those kind of things. So um, they'll probably be looking for those plans through Board of Health to see exactly where that septic is located. Basically, um, I would want to start from scratch at this point. So well, I know I, when we met, excuse me, when we met with Bob Ferrari in the way beginning of this, um, he he was very adamant about this 20-foot wide road being left yeah. as is because uh, in the event a crane has to go down there and um, so that's one thing that we cannot interrupt interrupt and is the that height path. of that tower mm. has to be so far away from the proposed playground right. in regards that if something was to yeah, fall it was to, yeah. to topple so um, so do we need a vote to send prior votes on the playground and to have them start anew with the town planner and with that committee? It, I don't think we've ever I made. think we voted. Well, we, oh, I think yeah. I, we definitely had a motion at our table to, That's allow, how far them, go it goes. to allow them to, to put a playground <laughs> on that spot because at that point they were trying to figure out the, how to inform the school and how to um, raise funds because I remember when they said they were going to solicit townspeople I was thinking in the back of my brain not during our centennial year <laughs> right. so um, yeah. it may have been 2000 yeah okay so I, I would entertain a motion if it's, it's legal to rescind all previous votes, previous votes relative to this earlier agreement our so I make a proposed motion agreement mm -hmm. to rescind previous votes to have the playground committee start anew with location scheme design, whatever the, that subcommittee and committees with, are going to do. With, uh, and, and review all with and our new plan. To, to come back to, with the, yeah, exactly, with the town planner and then bring back a new proposal. Roll in a second. Second. Roll. Aye. Aye. Okay. Confident it'll come back with a better, stronger yeah. proposal. Yeah. I think we're all set for Let's that. Let's not part use of it. any lawyer time. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> <laughs> no lawyers here. Yeah. <laughs> Down <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, John Hadley's out there. Uh, I hear them. Yeah. yeah, they are out there. I, I think hear them. You can pass if you want to mm -hmm. say that. Okay, next on the agenda was schedule was the, the uh, medical marijuana dispensary. We're going to just postpone that for a bit until uh, the availability for the availability of John Hatton is in another uh, session on the meeting. Uh, Megan, Megan's way, uh, no overnight parking. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to update the board uh, because I know uh, it was something that the board had um, addressed. I'll just give you a. Uh, a piece of correspondence that uh, I've had back and forth uh, with a resident um, that had brought this uh, to our attention initially. I just wanted to advise you that both the police chief and the highway surveyor um, are on board. They've ordered the signage for uh, Megan's Way to um, uh, put in place signs that say uh, no overnight parking. And um, as soon as those signs come in, they will be up. All right. So uh, that was um, there were a couple things that were um, happening since our last meeting, and um, that kind of uh, got uh, reprioritized uh, for this to uh, be put on the agenda again. So I wanted to make sure that you knew that um, that should be occurring, and uh, it only takes a few days. Uh, and I expect those signs will be up, and hopefully the residents uh, that were having issues there will be content with the decision you made, which I think they will be. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
You're on again, Mrs. Callahan. I know, I know, and we're moving right along, which is a good thing. Um, the, the, of course, it's we have every week we have the town hall update, and uh, you know I wanted to make sure uh, because we're getting uh, closer to being able to make a decision. I wanted to walk everybody back um, to July uh, 13th when we were evacuated <coughs> from our building, and um, we were given a scant a notice, and uh, we have taken up uh, you know temporary. Uh, space in um, the police station. Having said that, um, it's not been an easy thing. Uh, we've worked very hard, I think, at the department level to make it work. Uh, everybody, including the citizens of this town, know how difficult it is to, to try to operate town government without a building. Uh, having said that, your board uh, has really done, I think, a, a great job, and I'm not just saying this, I've, I've worked at all kinds of levels, um, understanding how difficult of a task this is to try to set in motion to move town hall operations um, and to do it for an indefinite period of time. Uh, you um, worked fervently to try to get our insurance company to partner with us on this and not to walk away from it because we do believe there are issues that go back to 2015 during the biggest snowstorms um, in the history that the state had seen. And um, having said that, you were able to um, uh, get the insurance company to allow us to actually select an engineer, an engineering firm that has now come out, done their assessment, and it should be not too long now uh, for us to be uh, getting that report. Regardless of what the report comes back, we know there is some significant repairs that need to be done on this building. And the insurance company would not allow us to be in the building when the repairs are being done, and we're talking about a major overhaul of roofing, uh, sidewalls, things like that. Um, we expect that report to show that regardless of what happens with their recommendation of costs and associated steps that we need to do to make this town um, hall building uh, even enterable again uh, for public business, we need to come up with a second strategy. So your board had reconvened a charge for the municipal um, building committee, uh, retitled it the municipal um, center building relocation committee. They have been meeting weekly through the summer uh, since they had been given that charge. Um, your chairman has been on that board. Uh, John Lara um, has been a very um, hard-working member as well and what we're basically close to doing and that will be um, coming up this Thursday they are meeting to actually um, come up with the recommendation to your board so I bring that up because there have been uh, a number of scenarios that they have gone through they have looked at costs um, they have looked at everything from trailers to modulars to um, senior center to library to open space uh, to looking at buildings that we have that are owned uh, by nonprofits in the community. And of course, we lack uh, overall public buildings that we can use. Um, having said that, we've entered into some dialogue not only with the Chestnut Hill uh, Community Association, but also the American Legion Post, which has come to these meetings as well and been uh, fervently interested in trying to help the town. Where the actual Municipal uh, Center Building Relocation Committee comes up with their final suggestion, we'll know on on uh, Thursday. And I would like your board to convene a special meeting at 7 o'clock so that board can report to you so that we can now exercise the actual next steps which um, are going to need to be done and, and executed expeditiously to um, make uh, us have the ability to move in to one or two buildings, whatever they come up with for recommendations. So I'd ask that. Um, I know it's a long-awaited process, although just last week was really the two-month mark, but it feels like eternity <laughs> since that order was given to us. And, uh, and I think that we're all looking forward to the next steps um, to be able to, to work on um, being able to provide a more permanent location. Thank you. Motion to convene a special uh, select board meeting uh, for uh, Thursday evening. Uh, the uh, Building uh, Advisory Committee uh, will convene their meeting at uh, 6, 6 p.m. And our meeting would follow. That's this Thursday. This coming Thursday. Pardon? Do you want that recorded? Uh, that one or the one after it is up to you. I think it would be great if you could record it. We may have some other things to add to that. Are you around? Will we have a quorum? I'll be here. I'll be here. Okay. I just want to make sure before we... John, John is, will still be away, I think. Yep. I'm 
I can do it. You can okay. schedule that. Over, already. Um, so, uh, Mr. Callahan, uh, you'll post it with the uh, town clerk. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the final thing I wanted to say about the town hall update is um, I know that you host the Millville Matters um, website and uh, it was really nice because I had um, a resident come in and um, several residents, you know, we, we've been working under um, less than desirable conditions, uh, but I have to give credit to our town hall employees and uh, on the website, of course, uh, there was a, a real nice shout out to the town hall employees who, despite the conditions that they have been, um, that they have been making themselves readily available, efficient, and all have a cheerful manner, um, and that their efforts are really truly appreciated, and uh, that was echoed by a number of other residents. So I, I just want to say that um, that part of it is, um, is heartwarming, knowing what um, we've been faced with, and uh, so it makes me feel very optimistic that we can execute the next steps uh, to make this um, a reality for the um, you know more permanent location for us. Congratulations to the uh, town hall staff. Uh, Thank and you. Their diligence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Engine one. Uh, yes, I wanted to update you because um, that's one of the things that I like doing with people is that when you do take an active step um, to let you know what's actually happening. And so for this particular one, we know we've had the chief before us and the fire department. Um, just to give you an overall, um, the uh, Quint engine um, it has been uh, purchased. The um, deputy uh, fire chief and um, the fire chief are on their way tonight um, out to actually fly out and pick up the... Um, uh, engine it's been registered and, and insured and uh, to drive that back uh, the other um, engine one has been listed at its full price um, uh, I I don't know if it's actually been finalized by the check but they came out um, they were ready to do this um, so I don't think we have it quite in our hands so but we expect that um, and it would be it was placed at $170,000 uh, we have been able to purchase the the um, quint for twenty-four thousand nine nine nine, um, it will be expected to have about forty thousand uh, on the very high side, fifty thousand. But the chief is confident with a forty thousand rehabilitation budget, and um, so by selling off the other piece of equipment, um, you know that that is um, a tremendous opportunity. And I want to—I know Selectman Lara is not here, um, and I know this board had paused uh, in the summertime uh, when it was presented to them at, in a different way. And um, sometimes you have to do that in town government. And um, this scenario presented itself in a way that is working great, I think, for the fire department to get the equipment that they want and desire and need. Uh, and we're doing it in a way that is going to cost the town uh, far less and actually help gain more um, for the town in the long run to, to meet their capital needs and or uh, community needs. So I, I do applaud the selectmen for that. And I know that um, the chiefs are both um, happy with the way the things are turning out. Thank you. Municipal aggregation. Yes, I, in the past um, weeks I, I reported to you that there was a delay from the, the DPU in approving the Millville's petition for municipal aggregation and we were assured that it was had nothing to do with our application uh, but it had to do with the larger uh, issues that were um, at uh, the state level that had to do with um, uh, pipelining and uh, so I want you to know that no sooner had we had our meeting and I had talked about that that the next day that I got in the email to say that the DPU has approved our petition and um, that they will be in um, touch our, our colonial power group that had advocated through the um, public testimonial period is going to be in touch with us um, and to discuss the next steps so congratulations on that and um, that can was a long process as well and can I we put on there I know a lot of the younger individuals um, and tech savvy will you know pick this up through postings or newspapers or whatever um, but could we possibly get some information or somebody to come to the senior center one day because I'm afraid that our senior population I know they're going to send out this card and mm -hmm. say if you don't want and you have to because that opt-out kind of gets me every time but I understand why they have it 
but I, I just want to make sure that our seniors or a senior director or a senior citizen staff understands sure. it so that if they are asked about what this card is, do I sign it, do I not sign it, that they ha that we have some information here or someone knowledgeable to help them through the process because they may not sign it, they may, you know, I just. That, that's, that's a great suggestion. I worry about that because the younger people are going to see it on Facebook or in the newspaper articles or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. I just, I think we need to reach them. I would be more than happy to, to uh, meet with our um, senior director, especially once we know how the rollout will be, um, so that we can perhaps, um, you know, just like the SHINE program, you can educate those mm -hmm. people on the insurance aspects for seniors. I think for this, um, no different than prescription advantage, or we've had a long history, um, I think, across the Commonwealth working with seniors uh, to try to, to target those groups for education. I think it's a great idea. I can work with Jill to think about as this gets closer to really being rolled out where they have to make a decision that we um, try to designate uh, some people who will become more literate on the subject and pr not just for one you know, um, luncheon, let's just say, with you, maybe you get 50 people and you don't get the rest of them, but have somebody um, who, if the people are calling, designate a number where they can call in and ask somebody at the senior center. I think that's a great and idea. And I think they're missing because, uh, you know, they do watch cable where the younger crowd's jumping on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So we're missing even that piece of education for, for that, that target audience. I would like to invite a representative from Colonial as well okay. to come and present to the board again mm -hmm. and update, update the progress of the yeah. program. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's good. I'll try to take a look and see what it makes most sense uh, going forward with their rollout. Okay, mm -hmm. excellent. Thank you. Very exciting next one. Small bridge. <laughs> Well, I was more excited when I saw it, but uh, I wanted to, yeah, the Mass DOT, I, I explained how after we went through the budget being passed at the state level, uh, despite the fact that it was almost $900 million short, it invariably does not affect every uh, grant program. And so it's uh, this exciting time in the fall when many grants uh, are becoming um, well known to us uh, through a fast and furious application deadline. So the Mass DOT um, had issued the Small Bridge um, Program. Uh, we actually had been um, uh, reached out to by the um, uh, Tech Incorporated, which was the uh, engineering firm that we worked with to submit our Mass uh, Strap Grant, Mass Work Strap Grant. And uh, they were actually already doing an inventory because we're a small community and this, this uh, particular uh, municipal small bridge program was to help the communities that have a bridge that's too either too little um, and uh, can access funding or too um, right in the middle uh, because it's not big enough. So it's really bridges that are between uh, 10 and 20 feet that actually get bypassed federal or statewide. Uh, statewide for funding. So this was a program that uh, has been, um, it's going to be issued over a five year, $50 million. So even though we have a very large river that goes through Millville, we don't have a lot of small bridges. Um, one of the things that I had uh, thought about um, until we really read uh, the real nitty gritty detail of the um, application in discussing is um, the fact that and, and uh, your vice chairman had brought to my attention the old bridge that used to connect uh, Bannigan City to um, the mills and, of course, the land that the town has um, has in its possession. So one of the creative ideas would have been to take a look at that and see if there's a potential to revive that because it used to provide access there. And um, one is that the river is a little bit wider there, even though you see the old granite bridge abutments, which are, is really cool. I went down there with the uh, highway department to look at it. And then I said, gee, says the crow flies, that looks a little bit more than 20 feet. Uh, but, and we, we did concede with the engineering firm that that wouldn't be, um, you know, one that would actually go because it's not an existing bridge. But it, it is definitely something we can look at in terms of another Mass Works potential grant, not a strap grant, but a Mass Works grant, especially um, because that's a priority development economic area for us. However, one of the things that they're looking at, and I know our highway surveyor um, in speaking with him today is also doing uh, with them, is that 
we have um, basically the five bridges, the five dean bridges. I love saying that because it's close to her heart, the five mm -hmm. dean bridges um, named after John Dean. Uh, we're going to check uh, to see if um, any of those bridges, because uh, I've been told uh, since coming on in this particular position that even those, those bridges were constructed during a time that I served this community, since 2010, they've already started to um, experience um, deterioration because of the heavy truck traffic. And so if any of those bridges uh, actually are within the 20-foot span, we may be able to apply for that. So I know the highway surveyor is going to be working with our um, engineering firm that seems to really want to work closely with us and I'm really excited about that so if we can do something we will but I just wanted to throw that out that the um, highway surveyor and the engineering firm and myself we're looking at leaving no stone unturned um, especially for our, our streets and our bridges uh, and that would be that Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We continue to get good reports from Northeast Water Systems. So. We do, and we had that one uh, blip this past spring before I had come on board um, that showed that we had an issue, um, and it had uh, been rapidly brought into compliance, and since that time, both for August and for September, I put them both in your uh, packets. Uh, they were um, all samples that were taken for the water supply at the um, MES are absent for bacteria, and all the other analytes were within allowable drink. So that's a good thing. Are um, these also sent to the, um, the school yeah. district? Yes, okay. as far as I know, because um, the, um, the uh, superintendent, uh, when they had gotten the uh, issue from uh, the issued report from the DEP, that mm -hmm. actually was just re sort of capitulating what had happened in the spring and saying that we were brought into compliance, uh, that report was considered in the first read, if you read it, you might have been alarmed that there was something going on, but that was um, prior, and it was just the DEP takes a while sometimes to issue their reports, and when they did, they were it was an issue order of compliance, and so um, after speaking with uh, the DEP and making sure that the superintendent understood that, so I just bring it up because I know parents may be watching, and uh, we're all concerned about the health and well-being of our children, and that's um, you know we'll continue to monitor it and uh, put it before you anytime uh, there are any changes that need to be um, considered by your board as well. permit uh, yes I you know like to keep you updated when um, we're doing something with uh, the staff and today uh, several of staff members uh, from our planning board um, town clerks and also our building uh, department went uh, over into Upton because there was an e permitting demo day where they actually had a number of vendors who deal with per permitting uh, from a variety of different perspectives, not just for building and not just for um, assessors uh, to be engaged uh, with that, but uh, they also uh, had permitting related to uh, the financial aspects and how that it can actually work with town. So several of them went today. Um, I'm eager to hear how that went for them, uh, and I hope that um, I did talk with uh, our um, assistant assessor and uh, she had said that uh, she has some ideas about um, at least one of the demonstrations and would like to have them come out and do an actual demonstration to see how it really tailor fits with our existing technology. So I think anything we can do to modernize how quickly we can not only process permits but uh, keep track of them and, and help our staff be able to better meet the needs of our residents who seek those permits, I think it would be a good thing. So, so it's something to consider once we get better settled. I think so, yes, yes. But at least having uh, taken a look and taken advantage of, uh, you know, a free opportunity to actually do that, I think was a really good thing. Any of these fall within the IT on the community compact? We, we yes, uh, and that would be something that uh, I checked again today, and that money has not yet been transferred from the state into our treasury, but that would be the next uh, piece of it okay. is to look at that. We're using some of that for our IT services related to our intermunicipal agreement with Uxbridge, but 
that's a whole nother piece that we're going to take a look at um, as soon as that becomes uh, readily available but this is one of the steps I want them to take a look at because what they might have done in theory to put forward the proposal that may have changed I mean technology changes all the time you know you can have a vendor one year that's charging you ten thousand dollars for a licensure fee and because of the competition and they get better all of a sudden that licensure fee can drop in a year to five thousand dollars so I think it's prudent to, to keep on track and look at those kinds of things Next is the Mass Selectman's Annual Fall Conference at the Holy Cross. Yes, and I thought that because that's another one that's close by, uh, that I would make sure that it give you enough advanced uh, warning for that, um, October 29th. And uh, of course, there'll be um, municipal best practices for capital planning, but also there is a big open meeting law, public uh, records uh, changes that have been done that uh, we're going to have to address as a public entity going forward. And I know that KP Law has issued some um, statements that they will be working with communities to become more, to have us become more familiar with those changes because they're quite uh, significant. So that's one of those things that will be um, included in here and uh, in a keynote speech from the former speaker. Uh, not, he's not the former, he's the current speaker, my former speaker, uh, Robert DeLeo will be there. Uh, but it looks like a good um, round uh, table area for getting information. I've attended that in the past and I found it worthwhile. Good. So I plan on attending again. It's always a tough weekend for me, but I went 20 years ago if that counts. <laughs> Well, hopefully the agenda's changed a little bit. By, yeah. <laughs> I put it in my calendar, but okay, it's Halloween weekend. All right. so do we have anything to sign this evening? Yes, you do. You have just the minutes to sign, and also um, the next uh, meeting will be, the regular meeting will be October 3rd, but of course we're going to right. continue to schedule special meetings as needed um, to address uh, the relocation issue. So. I thank you, and um, tonight you will be having an executive session um, after you um, sign your minutes, and um, and if you can read, one of you can read that. It is uh, in relation to um, the consideration of. Um, we have to invite the planning board. In. Oh yeah, we didn't finish that. I'm so there, sorry. Let me go into that. I don't know that. if they're still meeting. If they could break for a okay. moment. Pause. No pause. We knew we could have done a little infomercial on something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Buy your candles now. Buy your candles Ten now. <laughs> <laughs> Get your tickets. It's gonna be a good time. <laughs> we'll deliver them. They're on the verge of finishing their meeting. Um, they do want to come in. Uh, again, um, what I will do is hand out some information to you that was not included in your packet. It relates to the, um, the recent town meeting this past uh, spring that actually uh, has information in it that they're all the same, yeah. That we had on May 2nd, and uh, there were proposed changes. Uh, it, it is all the same. It yeah. is? Sorry, yep. Okay. I'm going to take one off there. I just threw one in there. Yeah, that's like pretty good. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Uh, one of the first uh, pieces of it uh, on the top uh, correspondence, you'll see that uh, it was expressing uh, that we were going to, at our town meeting, amend the definitions um, by adding. Uh, a registered marijuana dispensary um, and off-site medical marijuana dispensary just to give the public um, uh, 
a background that when the Massachusetts uh, legislature had passed that they were going to be allowing um, these kinds of facilities um, to be able to site themselves across the Commonwealth, they did give communities a period of reprieve uh, to see if they could actually come up with their own um, zoning bylaws um, and to help the communities plan uh, how they would like to go about um, working to accommodate these as businesses, uh, more or less. Uh, and so your community had exercised uh, in, in, as part of their right uh, to uh, suspend for a period of time. And then I think that just uh, finished in, uh, was it 2014? It allowed you up until, and then with the expectation um, in front of me. Then was the expectation that you would actually, during that time period, work with your planner and planning board and think about places um, and sites that might be appropriate and how you would like to proceed in, um, in actually hearing people uh, who are interested in actually setting up that kind of um, business uh, in, in a community. So this past spring, you had the planning board put forth a proposal to amend uh, the zoning bylaws and uh, the zoning bylaw that was uh, passed at that time um, as far as I know was to say that you could actually um, by special permit um, actually establish a uh, registered marijuana dispensary or off-site medical marijuana dispensary uh, in a commercial business district um, and as not permitted with the remaining districts, um, and they also were amending the bylaw for regulation table usage to regulate off-site marijuana dispensary, medical marijuana dispensary, as a special permit use within a commercial business district and a village center districts, and not permitted within the remaining districts. That's something that the um, they had a public hearing on, and then the planning board actually, you know, put forward that proposal at um, town meeting and they encouraged the Board of Selectmen and the other board of residents at that time to attend. So they also did say that for clarification, off-site medical marijuana dispensaries only allow retail sales to persons with approved patient cards while medical marijuana dispensaries allow the growing manufacturing and dispensing of marijuana products. Uh, we have had a renewed interest uh, coming through town hall of people who are, have submitted applications um, to be a registered marijuana dispensary, and they feel that this area, um, in comparison to other areas um, of the state, uh, has uh, a potential opportunity here, and they wanted the um, board not only to consider it, uh, but they also wanted to, um, I think, have an opportunity in the future to be uh, able to uh, go before a planning board. And so now that you've made those kind of adjustments by bylaw, I think it would be interesting to have the planning board come in and give you their thoughts uh, because we do have people who are interested in moving forward with the process uh, and I think that they um, perhaps with the planning board and your, your um, input would uh, have a better direction even though the town meeting decided that. Uh, so it's now I think a, a matter of how do you want to proceed with um, these kinds of inquiries and um, and so I put it before your board because it is a, a change. So I don't know if you want to talk about that until they come in, uh, and I can go and see if they're ready to come in now. I would like to hear what the planning board. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can go get them. Just put it on pause, Tim. <laughs>
They have just adjourned and they're on their way in. It's all right, yeah. He's, I know, he's still talking. How does this show the uh, upcoming election? I don't know. I haven't actually been uh, paying attention to um, how it has been, but I, I think it's rolled out quite significantly in a lot of um, communities. It's different than the recreational. That's a different ballot thing, you know. I think the discussion about the medical part of it has been pretty well vetted across the state, and hence that's why we are being asked to come up with our own amendments to the zoning bylaws. So, Mr. Chairman, go ahead. <laughs> we talked while you were in here. So, uh, I just, um, Mrs. Callahan is right public hearing and give us a little bit of background. Uh, I just would like to hear input from the planning board relative to uh, permitting. Uh, okay. Well, Natalia is going to be in contact with this case and all. We just sent this email in. We're going to have her invited to our next meeting, which is the second Monday of October. We're, we're changing our night so we're not conflicting with the board selectmen and meeting on the same nights. Uh, and we're going to get more information from her on what they'd like to do. Uh, just hearsay, here they, they have a place in mind. But this is for, goes by a special permit from us. So we can make... Uh, just about anything we want to do, as far as you know, a distance from a play, a, a playground, a school, anything like that. Uh, I know the state has laws on it. We're going to have to follow those laws, but we can also increase it to a point. This, and we we this, just want to see what she wants to do, so we can make a decision on what, where, where the, you know, if they have a place in mind, and what we can do. And this is for a dispensary? Right, it's for a dispensary, yeah. Yes. Uh, I think the email, because I, I had a conversation today with um, Natalia, and it was actually in an email of Thursday, September 8th, that was sent to the town clerk, which was then forwarded to the town administrator. So I don't know if you have that one. Okay. And that's the one where it says they would not be retailing, mm -hmm. but cultivating, processing, and packaging. So that's okay, that I'm email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's from the same woman. It is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm but then the it. next email she sends. Because that's the eighth, right? You said. Yeah. The twelfth. That's the twelfth right. to you. Her information is a little different. Well, that's, that's why we want to meet with her, yeah. mm -hmm. and we want to get all the specifics on what they want to do, and uh, you know what they're required to do too. The impression I had is that we had a facility in mind. That's what I've heard, but I don't, we don't know. So is we the don't. process that they, I'm just reading the emails, it sounds mm -hmm. like they have to apply to the state to be. As well as the town. To, to say, mm -hmm. yes, you can do this. Yes. And then the town can then accept or kind of stand behind them on it. Right, exactly. And then we have, then we do our special permit hearing. Right. Um, is their state authorization contingent upon our support? That's a good question. Or can they just I don't know. This get, it for the, new. get it for the whole state and then yeah. each town chips in? I don't know. It's, okay. it's all new and there's a lot of questions to be asked. There's very few towns that have it so far, really, in mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and I don't know what uh, criteria had to be met for those towns. Right. And it's you know we did have we did put things on the town special on our mm -hmm. annual town meeting that we pass for medical marijuana. Uh, it doesn't cover everything, but we had to get something in. Yeah. And we did that. So now it's, uh, when we put special permit, luckily, so it's, we can ask a lot of questions and we can kind of control it. A lot of stipulations. Point. Yeah. So we look forward to October 2nd. No, the second, no. Me my, the second, second meeting. The which is what's it, the, the 11th? 11th? I believe Tuesdays. the 11th of October. It's a Tuesday, yeah. I think it's the 11th. So is this um, we invite them to attend as well? If, if the select would like to attend our meeting on the 11th, that would be great. That's the reason we kind of change it, because we like to come to the selectman's meeting, too. But we're all on the same night. It's pretty tough. You can put me on your dance card. OK, <laughs> good. Good. So after I call them, I can get back to you and let them know when. All right, we'll let you know after Natalia calls them. I'm sure they'll come if they want. They want to have something in town. <clears throat> That's about all we know right now until we talk to them. And I did also, Mr. Chairman, I expressed to them in the other room that uh, the other day I did have a, a, a person. I was not um, I was not there to, to see who the person was, but they had uh, left a, a note with uh, one of the other employees uh, to leave on my desk. And I'm almost positive that it was not, there was no last name, but there was a number and the, the name, the first name was different. So we may have more than one. So I will reach out to that and uh, make sure that we, we have that person also in the loop. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm just wondering if that individual is uh, an agent for mm -hmm. another company. I, we'll find out. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. Okay. I'm sure if they if they want it, they're gonna send send us some more emails, and uh, we'll probably find out through inviting this lady to our meeting. Okay. Right. Very good. good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Okay. So we've done our signing. Mm -hmm. um, and our uh, next meeting is October 3rd, uh, 2016. And uh, I hear a motion for the, to go into executive session. So I make a motion in the Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Subsection 21, Paragraph 6, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate in which the chair declares an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the town to only adjourn back to this meeting to adjourn the main meeting. Second. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.